tonight on Bondi Rescue. Taka was dead in the water. Ready? But doctors discover he didn't drown. So I don't think that you've swallowed too much water. I don't think you were close to drowning. Corey and Reedy go head to head in the lifeguard challenge. If he doesn't beat me this year, I want his resignation on my desk. And the biggest challenge of all, looking for love. She thinks I'm a wild man. I haven't told her that I'm a born again Christian yet. These men have lived and breathed the beach all their lives. It's in their blood. Many have come through the ranks of the volunteer lifesavers. Hoppo, Australian Masters champion on the surf ski. Harry's, world number two soft sand runner. Then there's Kerbox, former world number six pro surfer. They're an elite band of brothers, but soon they'll be pitted against each other, one on one, man on man. Every year, the lifeguards have a uh, lifeguard challenge where we do a big run, swim and board paddle. There's a little bit of competition. About two weeks out from the lifeguard challenge, a lot of the guys get a lot of rivalry between them and they start training real intense. Secretly, everyone says, oh, I'm taking it easy, I'm just going to go easy, I'm going to go slow, but when the race actually comes down to it, I think everyone sort of has a pretty good go. As the training intensifies, the pundits are already calling the race. If I had to put my home loan on someone, it'd be Rodney Rock and Roll Kerr. My tip for the lifeguard challenge is Harry's. He's the fittest lifeguard. He's always training. And... You know, there's always a couple of hidden favourites, you know, maybe including myself, but um, if there is a couple of local parties going on around the area on the weekend, oh, that's, that's the chain of destruction. <laughs> but there's a clear favourite. Bisho's a champion, probably our best water man. He's an unbelievable swimmer. He's like a fish. As current Australian belt swimming champion, Bisho is one of the best surf swimmers in the world. You see the bottle, of all the things I'm following. If it's not right, don't matter. You need familiar partners. He also has other qualities. Bisho's the prettiest man on the lifeguard service. Yeah, he's an absolute gentleman. Bit of a lady killer. Girls did exactly what I told them. They were very good and everything was alright, wasn't it? All good? Oh yeah. <laughs> Bondi Beach is a tough place to come to work every day for a young man. Many distractions, many, many, many distractions. Um, like I said, you have to train. <laughs> to keep your blinkers on. I mean, it's, yeah, it's better than looking at a wall or a computer, that's for sure. Well, they do tend to distract the young blokes. You have to pull them up every now and then because they've got wandering eyes. But, you know, us older, more professional blokes, you know, we're just eyes on the water all the time. I can't blame the father for that. I wouldn't be leaving a side either. With a daughter like that, she'd be still walking by my side when she's 30, 35 for sure. People think, oh, you're a lifeguard, you know, pick up girls from the beach. That's, that's a myth and a fallacy, believe me. Because uh, you talk to the boys and they'll try to tell a few or two, but never picked up on the beach. Beautiful women, handsome men. How can it be so many lifeguards are still looking for love? I would really like a girlfriend at the moment, but um, I'm very picky. <laughs> you haven't found a man? Show us your I hand. Have, no I ring? Have. Oh, oh, he hasn't proposed yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's he doing? A bit slow. Take him out to dinner, take him to the movies, be really nice, and it just doesn't seem to work. They just don't want to hang around. We've actually come to the decision yeah. that we really like you, we think you're gorgeous. <laughs> what could I like? Can we have a oh. kiss? <laughs> no, you can't get a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> it's of course unprofessional to be chatting up women on the job, so some of the boys have decided to look elsewhere. When the trouble starts, I give my heart to you. You're going to get very used to that sound. 
you're going to hear it every eight minutes. Judging by the looks on some of the guys' faces tonight, I think we have a few speed dating virgins. I give my heart to you. So welcome along to Mint Bar for Fast Impression Speed Dating. OK, so that's how it works. You'll hear three gongs when we're having the half-time break. Otherwise, every gong, if the guys can just move along to the next date. Trying their luck at speed dating are Chris Yates, Greg Bishop, Andrew Reid, Sean Carroll and Rod Kerr. Guys, when you hear that gong, that's your cue to get up and move along to your next date. So you're a speed dating virgin? Um, 100%, yeah. <laughs> no, it's nice work. Yeah, I'm what they're saying. Oh, you're pretty hilarious. Oh, yeah, I know. Most of them have said so. <laughs> well, well, the other one said I was a player, but there's no way in hell I'm not a player. Not a player. No, I, don't, I no. do not see player in you. You grew up, and where do you reside now? Balmain. Oh, Balmain. Mm. Very nice. It is very nice. Really? Nothing in a West Girls Lovely <laughs> Really? Is that, is that right? Yeah, I'm serious. Entertain me. Go on, come on. You've got a red handbag. That's funny enough, isn't it? Darling, this isn't funny, this is fashion. Okay? So are you the charmer of the five? No, not even near. Oh, you're shy, are you? Usually. Really? Usually. Yeah, you're so shy. <laughs> well, it's hard to fault the guys. I'm wondering if they did some sort of flirt training workshop beforehand. <laughs> Gates is actually looking pretty comfy, and I think if someone looks comfortable, they look confident. If they look confident, they're going to get yes votes from the ladies. Well, Rod, I think he's doing really well. He's on his third date now, and out of the three dates, I'd be very surprised if he didn't get a yes vote from at least two of those dates. I try everything. Really. Because Bishop over there, he's making a lot of eye contact and really intense and looking at his date, so she's going to feel like she's special and he's interested, even though he's dating ten other women tonight. Trying to get me if you're like. So what do the boys think? Definitely Amanda. Absolutely gorgeous, bubbly, friendly, fun. Yeah, I really thought she was the kind of girl I could settle down and spend the rest of my life with. Had an absolute ball tonight and I uh, met so many beautiful personalities. Oh my God, why don't they all come to Bondi? Hey? <laughs> the moment of truth's come. <laughs> I'm going to tell her I love her. <laughs> I'm gone. <laughs> And what's the gossip in the women's toilet? I think Sean's a lot of No. He's a player. He tried to kiss Rayma. He did. <laughs> she thinks I'm a wild man. I haven't told her that I'm a born-again Christian yet. I reckon Andrew's the nicest. Oh, it's just, just being friendly. Yeah. So, who won the most yes votes? Well, I just think it was nice that Greg hadn't had too much to drink, um, that you were actually actually able to have a, um, a sensible conversation with him. Love, no, no love tonight, I think. Maybe maybe a couple of little uh, hookups, maybe. Maybe something, but I wouldn't call it love. <laughs> yeah, no, we had a great time. <laughs> yeah, we did have fun. The, the lifeguards were very entertaining. <laughs> Barely a day goes by without a rescue on Bondi Beach. Most are routine, some are even comic. But each summer, there are life and death incidents that test the skill of even the best lifeguards. Last week, Japanese student Takahiro Ono was pulled from the surf. He was clinically dead. Banging, come on. Yeah. Lifeguards performed CPR come on, come on. and used a defibrillator. Stay out here, run clear. Ready? Yeah. The defib had no effect after the first and second shocks. He'd been dead for at least five minutes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Finally, on the third shock, Tucker started breathing. A good pulse, a good pulse here. And then actually get them back breathing First. and with a pulse. It's an amazing feeling that you probably can't really describe in words. At St Vincent's emergency, Tucker's still in a critical condition. Doctors have yet to work out exactly what happened to him. He was just trying to tell me something then. 
こんにちは。This time he actually felt that when he was standing, he started to get a bit dizzy. In the surf. サーフィンしてて、before when he was swimming, he started to get dizzy. たまに取られるんですけど、ただ。He hasn't had any cardiac problem in the past, but he has had some arrhythmia in the past. He has been told that he has. Until now, everyone thought Taka had drowned. But a childhood heart condition could be a factor. At school, that when he actually had that、um, generalized annual physical checkup, yeah, yeah, then it、had. was picked up.、Um, but he never was symptomatic. Oh, okay.、Um, so I don't think that you've swallowed too much water. I don't think you were close to drowning. He needs to stay in hospital because his heart went into a, into a funny rhythm. Oh, okay. Okay, so the cardiologist will need to look after him. We're concerned that he may have had a problem with his heart. He's only 26, but Tucker may have suffered a heart attack in the water, and could suffer another at any time. If he hadn't been defibrillated straight away, he could have easily died. And if it had been a delay until defibrillation, he could have had permanent brain injury. So he's done very well. Tucker's in a stable condition, but tests confirm he has a serious heart problem. Taki's had a cardiac arrest caused by something we call ventricular ta tachycardia, or the specific type is、um, to start to point. It's a, a type of、um, cardiac arrest that you can get with underlying heart problems. There's no obvious cause for the minute, so it's maybe it's something that's been with him for a long time. Hold your breath in. That's it. Hold on. No worries. Tucker's about to undergo surgery. A defibrillator fitted inside his chest will automatically regulate his heart to prevent another arrest. For the moment, he's still having trouble breathing. <laughs> It's too difficult. Is it? Yeah. But... When Tucker came to Australia to study English, he never imagined a swim at Bondi would end up in heart surgery. Lifeguards are on duty every day of the year, but it's still a job that revolves around the weather and the seasons. Many have second jobs, another life. And they all know what they're doing. Well, it's quite easy to be a、uh, leader in, in those circumstances. We get a big buzz after we go to a big fire, and if it's a good save, and I get a big buzz down the beach when I do a good rescue, or you know, we resuscitate someone. So they're very satisfying in that regard. There's busy days and quiet days involved in both jobs, but I mean it's a great feeling, especially knowing I'm never going to be rich. So this is how it,、uh, my life's enriched by helping people. While Corey's boss of his truck. Reedy's working at the back end of another. The way I see the Garbo run is it sort of, I guess it keeps me fit. Superstar garbage man. <laughs> it's not rocket science. It's not hard to do, you know.、Like. Get to go for a run and get paid to do it, really. Fitness is important to Reedy. The lifeguard challenge is on today. For three months, he's been training twice a day to beat one man. I have heard that he's training very hard, and so he should be. He's got little or no athletic ability. He、uh, takes every opportunity he can to、uh, give me a hard time, but I use it to fire myself up in training, and that so I can beat him. Corey was three-time junior surf swimming champion. He's fearless in big surf, and the longest-serving lifeguard on the beach. Reedy's the new kid on the block, and keen to earn his stripes. If I train enough, then. In a way, I'm sort of catching up to those guys. Like, I, and I, I mean, and I sort of would like to earn their respect. I'm sure there's going to come a day where he's going to beat me. He's like 25, and I'm 44 next week. He is entitled to beat me. If he doesn't beat me this year, I want his resignation on my desk. Eight o'clock next morning. As the flags go down, the lifeguards' Iron Man challenge is about to begin. A lot of nervous energy getting around. It's a handicap. The fastest swimmers and runners go last. I'm actually a bit nervous. You hope you guys are ready to race. 
Huh? But drag queens get more than a laugh for dressing up. They get to start first. I'm ready. <laughs> You're out, Bisho, one of the true thoroughbreds of the race. He's probably my favourite to win. Still defying medical history of the brothers, two men sharing one brain. <laughs> outstanding, outstanding athletes, very fit. Box. Don't be, don't be, don't be, <laughs> don't be put off by little Humpty Dumpty build. Let me tell you, he'll struggle in the run. He hates the run, but once he hits the water, he flies. The course starts with a three kilometre run from Bondi to Bronte Beach. Then it's a 1k swim to Tamarama and a 2k board paddle back to Bondi. <laughs> the drag Real queens thing, start dude. on pole position. Go. 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 With a three minute Go. handicap, Reedy's in the next wave. Go. 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 But Corey won't face Reedy until the swim. He's got an injury. I do usually find any excuse possible to pull out of these endurance events. And it just so happens I fell off a skateboard about 10 days ago and I've got a really bruised left heel and not much skin on my right foot. Got lucky the two brake pads worked, but... The drag queens have stripped off and hit the water first. Corey joins the race. The swim's his strongest leg. He's got 200 metres on Reedy. Back at Bondi, Bisho, the superfish, is victim of a severe handicap. Well, it's a 12 minute gap between the first guy to me, so it's only like a half hour race, so you. I don't know. Um, go! Go, Bish! Kerbox and Corey are in the race for line honours, with Reedy closing fast. Coming into Tamarama, Corey cracks away, taking the lead from Kerbox. I was pretty fresh, I didn't do the run, so I'm pretty fresh. But look who's coming up fast. Come on, Rue! Where's my boy? Let's see you go, there, boy. The old drag queen Kerbox dumped his dress at Bronte and is running second. In goes Reedy at third place. How are you feeling, mate? Absolutely dreadful. You can go on the board, mate. <laughs> Where's my boy? Kerbox has snatched the lead back from Corey, and Reedy's in a strong position. Meanwhile, Bisho's finally in the water and making up time. Heading towards Bondi, there's only a kilometre left to go. The veteran Corey has got the young Turk hot on his heels. Kerbox is leading the lifeguard challenge. Corey's in second place, with Reedy closing in fast. After three years of being taunted as a substandard lifeguard, Reedy's never been this close to beating Corey before. Then, for no apparent reason, this. With the finish line in sight, Corey stops. Uh, Reedy quickly passes him. Meanwhile, Kerbox's cunning ruse wearing drag paid off. He's first across the line. Reedy came in shortly after. Oh, it was good, it was good fun, it was good turnout. Plenty of blokes. Come third. Oh, it's better than what I expected. Corey's mysterious pullout has yet to be explained. It was a piece of cake. With handicap honours taken, the true thoroughbreds are still coming through. Harry's bolts up the beach with the best overall time, and Bisho's just behind. Yeah, it's a real mental thing. You know, you know all these guys here are good athletes, and when you're going to give someone 12 minutes start or even someone two minutes start. It's just, you're thinking, OK, two minutes, they can be here, but in two minutes, I'm still at the start line, haven't even started, it's like... Me and Crankers, we had a little plan, throw off. I think you're mucking around, then just pin it, and they won't catch up. Tactics. That's what we call tactics, you know? I tried to sneak around the point, Kerbox wears a dress. So why did Corey stop? 
My racing days are well behind me. Plus, you can't be running up the beach in second spot when you haven't done the run. I would have been embarrassed. It's never usually a race, it's only this year. Everyone's <laughs> hyped it up a bit for some reason. Reedy's been denied the opportunity to beat Corey, but that day may soon come. But I tell you what, I'd issue a thousand dollar man on man challenge to him to go in and out the break six or seven times when it's over three foot. That'd be a sure bet. The lifeguards who brought Tucker back to life have come to visit after surgeons implanted a defibrillator in his chest. When I swam, I felt getting worse. So I, I thought I had to go back the well, she shore, real, yeah. So you did realise something was wrong? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It was amazing for us, like seeing someone but dead and then five minutes later you're telling us what beach you're at. It's, it's amazing. If you had to pick a place to suffer a heart attack, Bondi Beach is an ideal choice. The best place you could have been would have been the, the front door of the hospital, but um, if there was a second place, it would be the, the beach with the lifeguards around and the defibrillator nearby. Um, it saved his life. Well, last night, you kind of, I was at home and you're sort of thinking, you know, hopefully it all went right and everything was everything worked. And to see him today and see him like he is, it's, it's amazing. Tucker's English is unclear. But his feeling for the lifeguards isn't. I can't explain, but mm, like a god, yeah, so an angel, <laughs> a superman, superhero. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, good to see you sitting up and having a chat. No worries. Take care, buddy, and have a, enjoy the rest of your stay. Yeah. Come <laughs> well, mate. Next on Bondi Rescue. Oh, it's the busiest day all summer has lifeguards under the pump. Many as we can get there. Over 200 rescues in one afternoon. Swarms of blue bottles put Bondi under attack. <laughs> and lifeguards help catch a pervert.